Hello, welcome once again to another edition of the Coach's Corner Program. I'm Jeff Ruth along with Harding Boys basketball coach Jimmy Pearson. And Jamie, a lot of weeks we have a couple of games to talk about. Some weeks we have three games to talk about. This week only one game to talk about. And as the schedule for the tournament that pans out, you have no games this week. Yeah, uh, I think it was 11 days we had between our last game and what will be our, our first round tournament game. Um, it, it gives us a little bit more time to practice. It gives our kids a chance to catch their breath. Uh, I think we all like competing, but um, at this time of year, you want to make sure you do all you can to prepare for your opponent. So uh, I hope that the break ends up treating us well. It's been good so far, but uh, time will tell. All right. When we come back, we'll take a look at the win against Galleon last Friday. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, upcoming tournament schedule, and uh, we even have a player that we're going to talk to. We'll do all of that right after these words. <laughs> Once again, back on the Coach's Corner program, and uh, Coach uh, wrapped up the regular season last week with a win against Galleon. Um, I, uh, if you look at the final score, uh, it was a, a comfortable win for you. Uh, I know the first time you played them over there, they, as I recall, they hit a bunch of three-pointers early in the game. So I think probably that you know early on you wanted to get out on top of them, and that's kind of what you were able to do. Yeah, they uh, they've been real up and down at the end of the season. Uh, Pleasant got them pretty good at Galleon, uh, and then they nearly took down River Valley down three uh, with under a minute left. Couldn't get it done, so uh, we knew we were going to be in for a challenge. Uh, it was our senior night, and we had four seniors, uh, and I know that game meant a lot to them. Um, we were really locked in defensively, which uh, when we get locked in defensively, uh, it, it really usually means good things for us. So I was really proud of the defensive effort. Uh, and, um, you know, they have a couple really good players. They have a, a first-team all-league guy and a second-team all-league guy, a uh, couple thousand-point scorers uh, on that roster. So uh, to be able to shut them down like we did and, and get away with a comfortable win uh, to celebrate our seniors definitely was a plus. As you look back on the season, you know, every year we always talk about how quick the season went. This year was no uh, different. Overall, I would think you would have to be pleased with the season. Yeah, uh, regular season was 16 and 6. Um, you know, there haven't been a lot of uh, teen uh, wins at Harding in the last, you know, to be honest with you, probably 40 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, this is my third year here. Uh, my first year we were able to win, uh, I think it was 13 games. Uh, last year was 14, and then this year we're up to, to 16 wins and with a chance to add uh, some more. So uh, I give a lot of credit to our senior class. They put a lot of time in. Uh, all of our players have put a lot of time in, and uh, usually when you're, you're ready to work, uh, good things happen and uh, very pleased with, with the outcome this year. Uh, but like I said, I hope we can get a couple more in the tournament at least. 16 wins against a real tough schedule, too. Yeah, our league is as good as I think it's ever been. You know, we got Shelby ranked second in the state. Uh, you know, River Valley's ranked second in the Central District uh, in Division Two. You know, it wouldn't surprise me to see either or both of those teams make the state Final Four. Uh, and then our non-conference um, played some, some really good uh, teams. Uh, Big Walnut from the OCC, who we came up short with, uh, did defeat Marysville. Um, and then we played some teams from Florida pretty tough as well. Uh, got a win against Indian Valley South, uh, who is, who's a very good team in Eastern Ohio too. So uh, really, really pleased with how we responded to a, to a pretty tough schedule. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights from the contest against Galleon. Well, as I said, it was senior night celebrating Alex Stokes, Braylon Dyer, Marquise Long, and Trey Cady. Uh, early on, we have Parker Iden celebrating a steal. Uh, you know, Parker's been playing well late, especially defensively. Uh, and then we have Logan Thrapp, who uh, his defensive performance the second half of the year has, has really gotten better. He gets a layup there. Uh, early on, we're up 10-4 to 4 in the second quarter. Uh, more Logan Thrapp, uh, and I think that's the steal we just looked at, but we'll look at it again. Uh, he connects there. I think it was the start of the second, and that puts us up 12-4. to 4. Uh, then we have Logan again from downtown. His shooting has been excellent this year. He's near 36% from the three-point line. 
Uh, and then Trey Cady hits a three. Um, you know, Trey's had a lot of injuries and stuff this year. He's one of the seniors I've talked about. And it's good to see it when he can hit um, a couple threes for us. Uh, Braylon Dyer grabbing a loose ball and getting out on senior night uh, and dunking at home. I know that was big for Braylon. I was proud of how he played that game. Uh, to take another look at it, Braylon just using his athleticism to grab the 50-50 ball and finishing it with the flush. I know it excited uh, some of the fans at home. It was so good, we're going to see it three times. Yeah, well, hey, I'll watch that one three or four times. We're up 13 at this point uh, in the third quarter, still at 13. Uh, Braylon, another deep three for us. Uh, you know, Braylon has had a really good career at Harding, and uh, I hope he has a couple really good performances left as we get into the postseason. There you see Alex Stokes with the block. Uh, you know, Alex is another senior that's been playing well. Uh, quick look at Boston Pearson swatting a, a shot away for a sophomore. He's had a good season as well. He starts the outlet to Marquise Long. Um, and at the final, we come up with a comfortable win in our last regular season game. We were able to celebrate our seniors and send them off with a win. So I think everybody uh, left the gym happy that night if you're wearing the red and black. All right. We come back. We're going to preview the upcoming tournament schedule. We'll do that right after these words. Gucci's Italian Scratch Kitchen is a unique dining experience with made from scratch ingredients and meticulous preparation of each and every plate. At Bucci's, you will not find a canned sauce in our kitchen. Every sauce from marinara and alfredo to our scampi and marsala is prepared from scratch every single day for every single meal. Don't forget the dessert prepared from scratch in our kitchen. Choose from fresh made cheesecake, tiramisu, brownies, or creme brulee for a sweet treat to finish your meal. Bucci's is also expanding with the addition of our dock lounge featuring the best in local live entertainment, as well as a variety of signature cocktails and limited menu items. The upstairs Urban 501 area is available to host your most special occasions and private events. Also coming soon to Bucci's is our fabulous outdoor courtyard area where you and your friends can enjoy outdoor games and entertainment. Located at 320 West Center Street in Marion, Ohio, Bucci's Italian Scratch Kitchen, Urban 501, the dock, and the courtyard are your one-stop entertainment hub for any event, large or small. Back once again on the Coach's Corner program, this is the segment where we talk with one of the players, and uh, congratulations to uh, Marquise Long, Jr. Marquise uh, uh, had a successful season in football and a very successful season in basketball. Uh, do you play a spring sport? Uh, yeah, I, I, I was debating like to get like stronger and stuff. I'm going to just actually finish track season now. I'm going to finish I, track up. Okay. Well, uh, before we talk basketball, we'll talk a little bit about football. I know you just signed a couple weeks ago with uh, Thomas Moore, school out of uh, northern Kentucky. Um, kind of talk a little bit about the process of uh, deciding, you know, where to go and uh, the whole process about that. Uh, when, I, when I went to visit there, I only went, visited one time. It was like I just felt like home. Like I picked, I picked there because I felt comfortable and then I, that I could be there for the next two to four years. Like the coaches made me feel – safe and at home because I'm going to be away from my mom and okay. yeah, I have a lot of boy. So the coaches give you any, I don't want to say promises, but uh, give you any uh, suggestions on things to improve and get ready for the for the fall season? Uh, or they say just lift, like just, just lift for that's all. Because I, I know when I get there, okay. it, it's a business trip, so when I get there, okay. yeah, I want to start. So. All right, well, very good. Let's talk a little bit about basketball. Uh, second year in a row, uh, well, first team All MOAC, uh, Central District Division or District Eleven. Yeah, is it first team? First, first, first team on that. Mm -hmm. I, I know you're the seventh all-time leading scorer in Marion Harding history, which yeah. encompasses over a hundred years. So, you've accomplished an awful lot. Yeah, I say, I mean, I'm excited what I did. I accomplished a lot, but we ain't done yet. I ain't try to go home. Tuesday, I'm not trying to go home that easy. I'm trying okay. to keep playing. I mean, I know practice is, is getting tiring, but I ain't trying to be yeah. done yet. Yeah. Just kind of talk a little bit about your, your season. What was the thing that, that you thought was the best part of your game this year? Uh, probably it being a leader this year. Last year, we didn't really have no leader. And we improved more when we had someone to step up and be a leader and control everybody, but not do too much. But, yeah, being a leader this year. You know, 16 wins, uh, that, that's a pretty good accomplishment. Most coaches would love to be uh, 16 and 6. That had a bit of a good feeling, not only for you and all of the seniors, but uh, some of the younger guys knowing that, okay, this is what we can accomplish, but we can still accomplish even more. Yeah, because every, every year since Coach Pearson been here, like, we improve, like, with the wins. Like, 
we got better every year. Football or basketball, do you have a favorite sport or whichever uh, one's in session? Right now, whichever one is in session, like I committed for to, to, oh, I committed to Thomas Boy for uh, football, so right there. That's, did, did, did you have some college interest in basketball as yeah, well? I, had I thought a lot, you did. But it was like where my heart went, like before my injury, like my freshman year, I was a football guy, so I just take my talent back to football. Yeah, you just you you just know what what's right, yeah. and, and Thomas Moore is the right uh, choice for you. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, we'll have a few more games to talk about. You've yeah, had a great are. career here at Harding, and uh, who knows, one of these years you'll uh, you may have a, a plaque up on the, uh, the the Hall of Fame here at Marion Harding That's High the School. Goal. That's a goal. Very good. I might even nominate you. Hey, do it. <laughs> Good. Marquis, again, congratulations. A terrific career. Keep it going. Best of luck in the future. Thank you, sir. Uh, outstanding, not only an outstanding athlete, but an outstanding uh, young man as well. Back with more on the Coaches Corner program right after these words. Once again, on the Coach's Corner program, and Coach, we talked about that uh, long, kind of extended layoff. Uh, you played Galleon last Friday. You don't have anything this week, and then uh, you got your tournament game coming up uh, uh, on Tuesday, a home uh, tournament game. So that's what, 11 days? That, that's a long time. Uh, what do you do to kind of keep the team, you know, still getting after it, but give them a little bit of a break? Well, we, we have, uh, you know, kept that in mind for sure. You know, with the way basketball works now, um, we started our, you know, our preseason workouts uh, in September. We take August off, and so we're, we're doing some open gyms and stuff in September and October. Uh, season starts early November, uh, November, December, January. We're almost done with February. That's a four-month season. So uh, we've been really cognizant, and I've used some of my veteran coaches, such as Don Worstel. Uh, we've tried to shorten practices, and what we've done this week, we've, give kid, we've given kids days off. We took a few days off after a Galleon game. Uh, we practice two days. We took a day off. We we'll practice two days. Take another day off, and then we'll go two more. So, uh, you know, I think it's an underestimated thing, and I think the more experience you get as a coach, you realize this. It is such a long season. It is important that you keep the kids, um, you know, animated and wanting to practice and wanting to come back to the gym. And and you know, the best way we've been able to do that is just give them time off and, and cut our practice times down. Let's talk about Tuesday night's opponent. Yeah, uh, Central District Division One. Uh, there are not a lot of teams that you want to play in the Central District uh, Division One basketball. There's somewhere around 45 to 49 teams, um, you know, and it, it's a meat grinder if, day in and day out if you're playing down there. So we were fortunate enough to get the 12 seed out of 49 teams, which is, is as good as I think Harding has done in quite some time. Uh, so I was really proud of that. Uh, we were able to to, to do some uh, some dancing around and. Uh, you know, we were able to get a home game, which is exciting to us. Uh, our opponent, Olin Tangi, uh, very well coached, a guy named John Fiesel, have had a lot of success. Uh, you know, they really shoot the three. And uh, when I say really shoot the three, they may lead the state in three-point attempts. They've shot over 500 threes on the season, which is over 20 a game. Uh, and they've made a lot of them. So, uh, you know, they've uh, lost some players. Um, they had a kid graduate early, a big guy to go to play college football. Uh, but he's done a great job with them, and uh, they've they've tied for the league, I think, with Marysville. Uh, he got coach of the year, so uh, we'll definitely have our work cut out for us. But, um, you know, the way we're playing and with some of our seniors, Marquise Long, uh, you know, Alex Stokes, Trey Cady, Braylon Dyer, and the way some of our younger kids are playing, uh, you know, I expect it to be a real competitive game. And I think if, if, uh, if we come ready to play and we're able to – to uh, shut down their three-point shot and, and, and score ourselves, uh, you know, I think we can advance to maybe round two, but we got to get it taken care of Tuesday against Olin Tangy. And the last thing you want to do is look ahead, but if you do come out Tuesday night, uh, who would you have? Uh, we play Taze Valley. Um, they took the bye, so they are not playing, uh, and we would play them or if we're fortunate enough to win. Um, they're having a very good season too, but uh, definitely beatable. So, uh, like you said, we hope that's a problem we have to worry about, and uh, we'll know that after Tuesday when uh, Olin Tangy comes to town.
All right. Well, best of luck on Tuesday, and hopefully we'll have a win to talk about next week. That'd be great, Jeff. Thanks. Going to wrap it up for this edition of the Coach's Corner Program. For Head Coach Jamie Pearson, I'm Jeff Ruth. Thanks for watching.